Dr. Payam in the house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. And today I have a very cool video for you as usual. Namely, in a previous video, I found all the functions f, such that f prime of x equals to the f inverse of x. And there's someone who asked me, what about the functions such that the nth derivative of f equals to the inverse of f? And it's actually really cool. It leads to something called the metallic ratios, uh, which I'll introduce in a second. And by the way, I didn't come up with this idea. This idea is due to John Kampmeyer. Thank you so much for the idea. It's really, really cool. And what is the idea? Well, just as before, this is way too hard to solve. So let's just guess f to be you know, very easy, it has a simple form. In particular, let's guess f to be a power function. So f of x equals to a x to the b for some a and b. Then first of all, let's find the f, the inverse function. And in case you're confused about this, if y equals to ax to the b, then x to the b is y over a, which means that x, at least assume it's positive or something, it's y to the 1 over b over a to the 1 over b. Which tells us that the f, the inverse function becomes a to the minus 1 over b times x to the 1 over b. So first of all, if you invert this power function, you get this function. And next thing is, well, let's figure out the nth derivative of this. So let's see. f of x equals to ax to the b. So f prime of x, it becomes ab x to the b minus 1 f double prime of x, it's a, b times b minus 1, x to the b minus 2. And in general, if you continue this, well, let's see. We get a, b, b minus 1, b minus 2, etc., etc. And at which term do we stop? Notice this is always one less. So this is always one less than the derivative. Here we have the second derivative, so we do b minus 1. Here we have the nth derivative, and so we do b minus 1 less, which is n minus 1. And then what do we put here? Well, for the first derivative, s, x to the b minus 1. The second one, x to the b minus 2. And lastly, x to the b minus n. And here comes the interesting thing. Notice this is almost like a factorial. We almost want to say this is b factorial divided by the next terms, which is b minus n factorial. So ideally, we would like to say this is a b factorial over b minus n factorial x to the b minus n. Except this doesn't quite make sense because b is not necessarily an integer. It could also be a real number or anything. Well, it turns out, though, there's a nice way to write this. There's a nice extension for factorials to like all real numbers. It's what's called the gamma function. So you can write this and I will not erase this. I will erase the <laughs> whiteboard because I'm so nice, okay? This is the same as a to the gamma of b plus 1 over gamma of b minus n plus 1, x to the b minus n. Where gamma is some integral defined in terms of the exponential function, like here, this cool shirt, OK? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and there's some other videos you should check out about half derivatives where I define this gamma function. But all you need to know for now is just it's an extension to the factorial. In particular, if b is an integer, then gamma of b plus 1 should be b factorial. Okay, that's wonderful because look, we found on the one hand, whoops, on the one hand, here, 
we found that f inverse of x equals to this expression. The nth factorial of f equals to this expression. And well, to figure out if both of those are equal, let's just equate them. So f inverse of x equals to fn of x. That means, or I guess the opposite, it means that a to the 1 minus b, x to the 1 over b, equals to a gamma of b plus 1 over b, f gamma of b minus n plus 1, x to the b minus n. Okay, and what does that say? It says a constant times a power function of x equals to a constant times another power function of x. And if two power functions are equal, the nice thing is both their exponents have to be equal and the coefficients have to be equal. So what we get is, what we get is, 1 over b equals to b minus n, and a to the minus 1 over b equals a to that gamma times that gamma function. And so we can use this to solve for a and b. And so let's start with the easier equation first. First of all, 1 over b equals to b minus n. So we get, if we want, 1 over b equals to b minus n. Let's multiply by b, and we get, in other words, a like cross multiply. So we get b squared minus nb equals to 1. So b squared minus nb minus 1 equals to 0. And using the quadratic formula, we get b equals to n plus or minus square root of n squared plus 4 over 2. And here's the interesting thing. So remember, this depends on n. What happens if n equals to 1? We get 1 plus or minus square root of 5 over 2. So if n equals to 1, we get the golden ratio. And in fact, in general, those kinds of numbers, they're called the metallic ratio. Ooh. Yeah. If n equals to 2, that's what's called the silver ratio. If n equals to 3, is oh. the bronze ratio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really, really <laughs> cool. And there might be a separate video I'll do on those videos, uh, on those um, ratios. But for now, it's really cool. Namely, remember the question of finding f prime equals to f inverse of x resulted into finding the golden ratio. Here, if you want f double prime equals to f inverse of x, gives you the silver ratio. And in general, those are the metallic ratios. And I'm supposed to write it phi n and something, but for now, let's just call it phi with the assumption that it does depend on n. And it turns out the other one, I believe you get is something 1 over phi or minus 1 over phi. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, let's say minus 1 over phi. Right, so those are the metallic ratios, and well, how do we solve the problem? We find that, first of all, b equals to phi, where this is defined as phi with the plus, and with that, let's also solve for a. So now let me erase the whiteboard. There's one more whiteboard, I believe. There is? Oh, yeah. oh, oh, I forgot. Anyway. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Fancy, okay. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> This is UC Irvine, you should come here. Okay, <laughs> if you want fancy whiteboards. Okay, and then what are we left with? We have, remember our equation, a to the gamma of b plus one over gamma of b minus n plus one equals to a to the minus one over b. But what does, uh, well, first of all, we let b equals to phi. So we have a to some gamma function, so I guess f gamma of phi plus 1 equals to a to the minus 1 over phi. And then 
Well, again, B is gamma. Sorry, B is phi. So B is gamma of phi minus n plus 1 equals to that. But it turns out, I believe, we can simplify this a little bit. Let me see. Um, yeah, we can solve for A. Sorry. So we have A of 1 plus 1 over phi equals to gamma of phi plus 1 over uh, phi. I'm sorry, gamma of phi minus n plus 1. Okay, and then let's see. It turns out I think we can simplify that a little bit now. So what do we know? We know that, so the equation is gamma squared, or I guess phi minus n equals to 1 over phi. So 1 plus 1 over phi equals to phi minus n plus 1, which becomes phi, yeah, phi minus n plus 1. So we get a to the phi minus n plus 1 equals to gamma, sorry, yeah, gamma of phi plus 1 over gamma of phi minus n plus 1. And then all you do, let's just assume we find the simplest solution, take the phi minus n plus 1 root of that. So a equals to gamma of phi plus 1 over gamma of uh, phi minus n plus 1 of 1 over phi minus n plus 1. Let me just double check, except, let's see, it's possibly a reciprocal, but for now let's assume that, and that's great, we have our A, we had our B, which was phi, Right. Yeah. yeah. And then we just have, we just plug it into our formula, and now we actually have to erase the whiteboard. No oh. more white, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we're left with the following. Again, what did we have? We had that, what was it? Uh, again, f of x equals to, let's see, a to the, uh, yeah. Mm, what was it? Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm so silly. A f of x was a to the x to the b, which gives you, <laughs> <laughs> I think sometimes you saw it in your notes, and like, you forgot what it was. I was focused on the other equality, so. Uh, gamma to the phi plus one over gamma to the phi minus n plus one, to the 1 over phi minus n plus 1, and then x to the phi. Whoa. Yeah. And remember there was another solution with b equals to minus 1 over phi? Wait, one second, what's that? No, sorry, phi minus n. So, uh, sorry, sorry, b was... Uh... Oh, no, wait, wait, that's correct. I think. We yeah, can look yeah. at the second whiteboard. Huh? Oh yeah, let's see. Yes, so yeah, I remember it was in actually the first one. f of x equals to ax to the b. We found a to be this one, and then b, remember we solved it, to be phi, or minus 1 over phi. Oh, well, yeah, I the got other it. solution would just be the solution with b equals to uh, minus 1 to the phi. So, or... Same, something similar, but with minus 1 over phi, and possibly it might lead to complex numbers, so we might have to exclude that, but this is a legit solution to our problem. Cool. Yeah. All right, so if you like this uh, cool metallic ratio excursion and want to learn more about this, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Yay! Woo! -hoo! Woo! -hoo! Woo -hoo!